Hey everyone, and welcome back to this new part of this series I'm doing on converting my 1978 Volkswagen bus to all electric. In the last video, we got the motor installed onto the transmission. And in this video, what we're gonna do is get this rear mount fabricated and built so that we have much more support for the motor. So stay tuned. So these are the products we're gonna be using here. This is a motor strap, and it's made specifically for actually the Hyper 9 motor, which is the new AC version of NetGain's motor offerings, whereas mine is the old DC warp motor. Either way, it's a 9-inch motor strap, and it'll strap around my motor just the same. I'll have a link in the description to an EV reseller, a parts seller. Uh, hopefully they still have it, but I actually bought this on eBay. So if you can't get it with through the link in the description, you can also just use that as a search term for Google or for eBay and find it there as well. I will have a link in the description to these. These are the bobbins or little shock mounts that I'm gonna use. These are gonna go between this and the bar. And these are 50 millimeter wide, which is about two inches by 40 millimeters tall, which is about an inch and a half. So um, hopefully these will fit perfectly in between here and here with the gap that I'm expecting. This is the stock mustache bar that the engine was on before. I actually have two of these. So I have one already mounted in the car here, and then I've got this one here too. But yeah, this is just a stock engine mustache bar. And it's not symmetrical at all, so that's one thing we're going to have to deal with. It also kind of bends inward, so I think this is the way it's mounted from the stock, but I have it actually turned around, as you can see. Now, the reason I turned that around is because the direction that I have it on the floor would have it more toward the back of the motor, and I don't want any strap to go over the air band. This needs to remain open. So where I want that strap to be is over right right over this side of the air band okay and so when i flip this bar around where the longer parts on this side it it lands right under here right under here where i want that strap to go so that's perfect so that actually means we don't have to do as much fabrication but notice it doesn't sit under the motor really well it's you know it's more, there's more gap here than here and there's no room to fit that bracket in because of it starts to come up right here. What I did was I put a level on the side of the motor and marked where it landed. So on this side, it lands right here. On this side, it lands way over here. And what I did then is I made another mark here, which is eyeballed equal distance, you know, symmetrical on this side. So that tells me that between here and here, which is two and three quarters inches, we need to extend it. So what I'm going to do is chop two and three quarters inches off the end of it. Then I'm going to cut it like in the middle here and graft in that two and three quarter inch piece in here, which will move this over so it starts coming up like this. But the overall width of the bar will be the same. Then I'll simply drill out these holes again and then that's it. So it's really cut, cut, weld, weld, drill, drill, and then we should be done. The other thing I'll mention is, notice that these wires are coming out of the casing of the motor. This is the old style Warp 9 motor had these thermostat wire, well, what is it, a thermistor a, a switch wire. I don't know if I'm gonna use it or if it's ever been used. So what I've already done here is knowing that the strap is gonna go right up there, I've already drilled a hole for those wires to pop through. So that's the only modification I had to make to the bracket, unfortunately. That's the game plan. I'm gonna go ahead, now that I've got this marked out, and take the bar back out, and we're gonna go ahead and weld that up. Kind of going back and forth on what I wanna do here. Obviously, my original plan was to take a section out of the end here, graft it into here to push this whole thing over. I just noticed that when you look at the bar from the vertical side, this is about a quarter of an inch thicker where the engine pan sits versus the handle itself. So if I section that piece of the handle in, uh, it will look weird. Really to make this work 
perfectly and, and, and also to take advantage, by the way, these holes right here are not just holes, they're sleeved all the way through for stability and, and welded all up. And, uh, but the problem is they're drilled for M8 bolts and I need M10. To make this look perfect, what I really would do is take a section out of this to move this closer to here for this hole, drill that out to M10, and then take a section out of my backup bar and section that in to move this hole out to here and drill that out and then deal with the excess length in here. A lot more work, it would look perfect. I don't feel comfortable with that because it would mean cutting up two mustache bars. These things go for about $100 in that condition, which is just, it needs to be sandblasted and painted and that's about it. I don't feel comfortable with chopping two of them up. That's just excessive. I wanna be able to sell that one with that engine when I clean that engine up and get it running. So I think I'm gonna go back with my original plan, which is to take a section out of the handle, put it in here. If I want to, I could probably put some sheet metal around it to thicken it up to make it look right. But um, I'm gonna have to re-drill holes out anyway for M10, so not worry about these sleeved inserts. And uh, we'll go with that. So I'm going with the uglier option, but less work and less um, hacking up uh, OEM parts that they don't make aftermarket copies of. As you can see, there is a difference in thickness on the base plate and on the arm. You can see right here, which makes it welding it, it real easy because I got plenty of room to, to run my bead. But as you can see, it doesn't match up. So if I want to make it flush, I could maybe put some, add some sheet metal uh, to either side to kind of flush it up, uh, just depending on how bad it looks. We'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and start by getting this section welded up, and then we'll go from there. Okay, well, I got my piece fabricated here. You could see that I lengthened this section right here by chopping off a piece in there. I've got it bolted in right here and it's just sort of hanging. So what I was doing is I'm gonna make some final measurements here, both for my bobbins and for this little piece that's gonna go on this side on the end here. That needs to be re-welded in. So first, let's, we'll check the bobbins. And I, I can already tell you I got my initial, my initial measurement for the bobbins was wrong. So I've already started the return process on those. They were 40 millimeters. And after I put my torpedo level on, and if I lift this up to level, about right there, and it's where it's matching up on both, uh, you know, on both sides, it looks to me like really, it's more like it's right at three centimeters. So I'm, all I've got to do is exchange those 40 millimeter bobbins for 30 millimeter tall bobbins. So I'm going to do that. Now on this side here, we've got this piece that needs to get welded back on. But the problem is it used to go inside of here, these two holes here, but now it's much too short. It would have to be, I'd have to extend it. Uh, I mean, whatever, a couple blade depths here. So it's about a quarter, in, a quarter of an inch short. But what I'm gonna do here is put it in these inner, these inner ones. I'll just throw, throw a couple bolts in here. And then what I'm probably gonna do here is just cut, measure and cut this off here. And so another probably inch off of this, and then I'll re-weld it on. Okay, well, we're making good progress here. So I've got that chunk cut out of here and I beveled all the way around both pieces so that they're in, they have like a V cut inset. So I have a nice groove to weld into and they match up really well. The reason I'm taking the extra time to take it to the car is because I've got this bolted in, I've got it clamped up, I've got the nice groove in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just put some packs on while it's in the car, while I know it's all level and bolted in and I know 
that this won't take off on me and make this out of the line. So I'm gonna go ahead and get, put about four tacks into it. Once, it. once it's nice and solid and I know it's out of line, I'll pull my bolts out and I'll finish welding it. Okay, well, I've got that all welded up and ground out, looks good. And as you can see, the whole bar is in. We've got our you know, welded section there and everything's bolted in and it's nice and level. Look, it looks good and straight, so I'm happy with that. It doesn't look perfect, but I'm happy with it. It's gonna be strong and it's gonna be functional. So the final piece of fabrication we need to do on this is I adjusted, I loosened this clamp a little bit and adjusted it back and I just wanna make sure that this hole is centered over the arm so that we can um, mark it out for the holes for our bobbins. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bolt down through it, just nice and level here. Make sure it's not tilted. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just trace out All right, a little skip ahead here. I got a bunch done off camera. So I, after I drilled my new holes over on my drill press over there, here's the, here's one hole and here's the other. They're drilled out for that 10 mil studs. Then I went and I sanded it all down, reprimed it, and then I got my first coat of paint on it. Got my little fan blowing out my wall there. And so second coat of paint, and I'm gonna call it a night. All right, well, we got our new bobbins in, that's good. They're the same diameter as the old one, they're just shorter. And I also got some hardened steel bolts that can go up under and through it with the right size. I put a little rubber gasket on there, and so I figured that would help to keep the water out of the bar here, uh, any moisture out of the bar here. These, the old holes were sleeved inside, so that's not an issue, but these aren't. These are just drilled right through. So um, got, also got a rubber, little thin rubber washer for the top side. We'll put that over this, and then we'll just go ahead and spin the bobbins on. And um, I might put a little thread locker inside of here, and, uh, and then from the top side, I'll have some nylock nut and a washer. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and put the bobbins on the frame, and we'll go ahead and get it installed. All right, well, it's install time. I made sure all the bolts, um, these, these brackets here, the bracket on the motor, everything's loosened up so I can manipulate things and make them all fit. And then once it all fits, we will you know, tighten everything down. I'm gonna start with probably just lifting the bar up here and getting it into these first, and then I'll worry about the rest of it. Well, there it is. I finished installing it, and I think it looks pretty darn good. I was quite happy. I didn't have to do any spacers, and I was quite happy with the way those went. They were very tight. I was able to get a bolt in through one side, and then you might have noticed I had to pick up my rubber mallet and push up against there to get that one bolt aligned into there, and I had to push up quite hard on that but that means I have a few pounds of pressure on this, pushing it a little bit upward, which means it'll be resting on it and, and supported by that quite well. I didn't want to put too much pressure to get that in and have it produce un, uh, upward pressure constantly, but to have a little bit of pressure knowing that it's cradled right 
is what I wanted. And I think that looks great. And then here's from the top side, I've got those bolts all cinched up there. Like I said, I had to loosen everything to, to get everything wiggled in. But yeah, everything is bolted in and looking really good. Well, this will be the part of the video where I'd say thanks for watching and see you next time. But if you give me a few minutes, I was gonna do a few follow-ups from the last video where I left some things unfinished. So one of those things from the last video that I didn't really touch on was the installation of the motor into the transmission. And a commenter noted that, and I, I have to agree with him, I just sort of flashed into showing you this without an explanation of what I did. Well, to not belabor the point, installing the electric motor with a clutch on it is almost identical to installing the original engine with the clutch on it. What you're gonna do is you're just going to put the car on the ground and then jack the motor up until it meets the, the level of the engine so the drive shaft and the clutch look aligned up and then you're going to push the motor onto the drive shaft and then put that four bolts onto the transmission adapter. Well that's easier said than done, right? But the difference between the electric motor and, the, and installing the engine is that the electric motor has those aluminum hub coupler and flywheel parts and you need to take a little more care. You can't just wiggle and jam on this thing and get it into place. Like I said, I just jacked it up from the bottom using my little jack with my modified board, got it lined up. With The good thing about the electric motor is it's much smaller and it's much more compact. So you can see all around and you can see what you're doing. So when I had this on the jack board, I put some rags under it to shim it on the bottom to make sure I had the exact angle going into the transmission. Like I said, using the jack to get the height, the motor to the right height, you want it all centered up. Now notice that the four stainless steel bolts that they gave us, these are the two on the bottom, go all the way through, right? Not to mention they're also about two to two and a half inches too long, as you can see. So once I got the motor in the position into the drive shaft and everything was seeming comfortable, I had about a, you know, inch, inch and a half a gap between the transmission and the housing, right? I was able to put those extra long bolts through all the way and get the nuts on there. What I could do, what you could do is turn the front of the motor and you should be able to hear the transmission turning like if it's in neutral so that you know that the splines are engaged into the, from the clutch into the drive shaft. So once you get it that close, what I then did was just made sure that the gap all the way around the housing was consistently like all about you know an inch and a half or whatever and then I got the washer and nuts on all four sides and then using a diagonal pattern going you know on this side at the bottom to the top to the bottom to the top and then continuing I would tighten those nuts in and what I was looking for was that they tighten nice and smoothly there was no binding there was no resistance and what I wanted to see was that gap slowly closing all the way around evenly and that the motor and the jack were being pulled forward nice and smoothly. And then I kept working that and luckily I never had any binding or issues so I was comfortably into the splines and as I just worked it forward you know a couple turns at a time diagonal all the way around I finally got it to suck all the way in to where the transmission and the adapter plate were together. At that point, I did the battery test that you saw me do to make sure it spun and didn't have any wobbling or grinding or any weird noises. And then once that was good, I then torqued those bolts down. So that was how I installed the motor onto there. Again, it's the same as the gas engine, just with a little extra care to not put stress on the parts. The other issue I had on the last video was my shifter. I couldn't get the shifting to work. And what I ended up doing was lengthening in the shifter and now when I'm in neutral this cup up here is completely centered over the gear shift. So the way I did that was I think I explained I found a garden tool that had a tubing that had the similar diameter. I couldn't add it to the back side because this uh, tube is much thinner and it sleeves around the rear solid shaft. Kind of like with the rear engine mount I just grafted a piece inside of here made it about an inch of a piece, which is about a half inch too long, and then cut off the excess, and then measured and got my hole re-drilled and my sleeve put back on. 
I also, as you can see, painted it back up real nice so it looks good again. So now I'm able to shift through all my gears, including reverse. And the other problem I had was with the reverse switch, if you recall, when I had the ceiling gasket on it, it wasn't engaging the reverse switch when I put it in the reverse gear. When I took the ring off, it did work, but you know, then I was concerned it wasn't sealed well. If you recall, what I said was I, I ordered an MP switch. Well, guess what? The MP switch is the exact same manufacturer. So there was no help there. I was wrong in thinking that the MP switch would, would fix my problem. What I ended up doing is I took the ring off and I, I got a toothpick and put a little amount of RTV silicone gasket maker on the flange here. And then I just ran it in without the ring. And as you can see, it's in there and, um, and wired up and working. So that was my fix for that. I don't know how else to make that work. Well, now I can mark off our task for the rear motor mount and that'll do it for this video. Take care.